Hey, this is Edison Abelard, and this is our continuation of creating game assets for Unity 3D. <clears throat> Pardon me. So let's continue. We're just going to bring this in for auto retopology. Um, so what we have here is this imports folder, which is, like I said, it was a nasty setup I had before. But I'm going to go ahead and go into our scenes folder. Go into our models our soda can and we're going to do the soda can first now the retopology the way it works is is, is going to on its own do its own logarithms and make things look better <laughs> so that's that, that's the gist of it but really what it's going to do is, is it's going to make our model um you know just it'll clean up some of the faces it'll even out a lot of the distribution of the polygons so it'll make it so much more effective and so much more efficient um, in the long run, especially if you start doing a lot of detailing and, and modifications and your mesh just gets uglier and uglier, doing retopology will allow you, even with higher res files, will allow you to take those files and make the mesh look cleaner and allow it to do better subdivisions just by doing that. So what we're going to do is, is um, the accuracy, this is, you know, 180, this area is actually the amount of accuracy. We can leave that at, at 180. I would say between, uh, it's really hard to, to guess, depending on your project. I've never gone above 300 on this, but as you add more time, I mean, as you add more, you end up increasing the time. Additional smoothing, sometimes that's a bad thing, sometimes it's a good thing. Approximate poly count, this is what it's going to try to reach. I'm going to say sometimes you have to just test this out. In games, you really don't want models that big, but then sometimes you really can't do a retopology, at least orderly, um, or automatically, shall I say, with with very little faces. So you may end up having to, you know, to make this 3000 and go back and delete them, delete, 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 and fix up your model. But for us, that would be too much. So we're going to start off with 800 and see how that works. This is going to be a three-step process. So, step one, it imports the model and is basically asking you, where do you want this to be densest most? And what that means is, is um, let's say it has, in this case, we have, I think, 800 we chose. It has 800 polygons. All it's really going to take is 500, right? Then it's going to have just a little more room to make some places a little more um, dense or make them keep some of their geometry. I want this rim to be one of those places. And this just tells it, hey, if you have extras or if you can, just focus on making sure that this rim keeps as much detail as possible and give this priority over um, some of the other um, portions of the mesh. Now, what you don't want to do is to start you know going you know a little happy with this and and start just you know coloring everything and saying i want every one you know like every one of these polygons to be um priority it's not really going to work that well um so don't do it don't do it <laughs> down here we we know this isn't going to be very important but if you wanted to you can go ahead and make sure that this comes out but i'm gonna let that ride so we got our top selected now i'm gonna hit next all right, so now step two is actually how do we want our, our edges to loop? If you just come across, you can tell it basically, I want you to loop this way. And what it'll do is, is it'll make its best effort to make sure that when it does do its loops, that its loops come around. Oof, that would have been nasty. You know what? I'm going to do this anyways just to show you. What, I'll, what it will try to do is, is match your edge loops. And make sure that you know like wherever it can it will follow these lines so if we had for example um, actually this is a great one if I come to the top right I want to make sure that this rim keeps its edge loops going around right so I just pencil in this area and it's just an approximation and it'll do its best to try to follow those lines sometimes it'll be more accurate than others but you see this very well when you get into especially like the human body and stuff. Um, then you can really see the, you know, the, the edge loops. But now let's look at this. 
hopefully it's smart enough to realize that I didn't mean this, <laughs> but if it doesn't, we'll hit next and we'll see that the edge loops will actually come down at that angle. And that's not really going to help our cause, but we'll do it anyways, just to show you, you know, just some of the things that happen when working with, you know, an auto tool like this. And this is actually 3d code. There are many ways to do your retopology and UVs. I just find 3D Coat to be one of the better ones, at least in my workflow. Um, you know, we have some other people here who use other things. If you're using ZBrush, ZBrush does have a Z tool for it, but I kind of trust this a lot more. I use it a lot more and I'm more comfortable. So boom, now we have our remesh. Uh, you see this? It did its best though, right? It knows that I wanted it to come down like this. Now this this could have been very useful. Let's say we were doing a dress, right? So we didn't want the cylinder to, to be, you know, just straight across. Let's see if we have any straight lines. This is sort of a straight line. So we didn't want this to be straight. We wanted this to bend because we know that when we modify our geometry, it's going to bend in that direction. So this would be useful. Then we already have this. If we want to do creases. The creases will follow the direction of the edge loops. That's very important when you're doing higher quality models. You want to follow the direction of the edge loop. And if we dare be so bold and come down here, now you can see, of course, this is a little lopsided, so maybe we should do on the top instead. All right, so let's look at the top. So what, what you'll notice is, is that we didn't get much love in this area. We have just this thin you know, edge really that stayed. We're not getting this whole entire, you know, like lip in, lip out, but that's okay though, because the benefit of doing retopology is, is we get a better mesh and we can come back and we can make those modifications um, as we please. Now, if you look at this top portion, you'll see that now we have squares all uh, with, with this exception. This is a dirty one, but, um, what you'll see is we have squares here. So now whenever we subdivide, this division will be so much better because remember the subdivision is going to take this square, right? It's going to divide it by um, half. It's going to divide it by half. And now we'll have four and we divide it again. We'll have eight in each one of these and it'll keep dividing into each sector. So now when we go back and we make modifications, uh, we can follow the edge loops because in this case, we're actually going to want to do that. We can follow the edge loops to create some detail without worrying. But since this came out so nasty, uh, let's go ahead and import again. And we'll try this again. We're going to import the can. 800 seemed to work fine. So let's bring it down to 600. <laughs> uh, we just don't want to have, we're going to have a monster cleanup later on if we, you know, have all these faces. So I'm just bringing it down for that one reason. So we're just going to go by um, quickly. Actually, you know what? We don't, I'll show you what happens when you don't do it. We don't add anything to it. You know, the world's not going to end. Your mesh is still going to be okay. You're still going to have um, a great auto retopology. Now there are manual tools in here by all means. Uh, you know, we use the manual tools all the time now, especially for, for objects where Auto retopology will end up, you know, you'll have to give 30, you know, 30, you'll have to give three to 6,000 faces and really you're trying to hit 250. <laughs> it's a nasty world out there. You're trying to hit 350. So you don't want to use 3000. So you may end up, you know, you might come in and do the, you know, the manual version instead. All right. So as you can see, because we did this, um, we didn't add this this extra edge. This actually doesn't come up as much, but that's fine. You know, it, it's more of a flat top, but we can add an extra edge loop. And while in Maya, we can actually bevel this and recreate this area and we can have it ready to do the next job. And that's going to be to do our UVs. But for now, I think this looks good. We're going to simply export remesh. Right, so we have the soda can, and we're going to just name it soda can re topo topology, and we're just going to save this portion and 
It'll, it'll import. Whoa, what are you doing? Dot o v j. Okay, yeah, it, it was it wasn't liking that. All right, cool. So now that we save that out, I'm not interested in doing the UVs right now. Um, but I'll bring in this other one and let's work on that other one. Bring that top in. Six hundred is is quite too much. Let, let's start off with two fifty. Now, sometimes you have to to you know play little games here to try to find out where this thing is. Uh, if you want, if you want to save anything, you know, make sure some of these edges stay around. You can go ahead and do so, um, but you don't have to. Now, this edge loop, you may want to use this, um, especially if you know you're going to do some more modifications on this. You want to keep this thing straight. Let's say, you know, you want to keep this as straight as possible, even though it's still at an angle. So you got to be careful, you know, when when you do this but yeah we won't need to do it in here so we're going to just let that slide just let this keep going I'm actually working on version I think it's three something uh, there's actually a new one coming out for what's the difference um, I've been using a lot of the beta so I honestly I can't tell you the difference between you know the first 3.5 release and what's gonna be in four or 3.7, um, I believe is what I'm using. Um, but, you know, it's it's a nice affordable tool. It's really comparable to ZBrush. If you're afraid of the ZBrush interface, using this might be a cool way to, to kind of still get that voxel without the headache. <laughs> All right, cool. So now we look at this. You can see this comes up a little bit. I don't really like that. Um, but we'll end up having to grab those edges and bring them down. This edge loop does not continue. Yeah, this just looks all wobbly, but that might also be because my model is wobbly. So we can fix this. We can export this out as is, and then we can fix the line treatment, or we can try to do this again and try to bring up some of the quality. Let's go in, grab the top again. Let's try to take this up. Let's double it to 500. Let's bring this up to 250. Hit OK, hit OK, or next and next, and we'll let this do this again. Without a doubt, retopology is just, it has to be done. And, you know, no matter what you do, whether you're doing this for production, uh, for games, or just straight, you know, VFX, uh, you know, sometimes you just you know you're just gonna have to do this retopology and it can definitely save you a lot especially when you start doing vector displacement which in another game asset um video series i will definitely show you how to do something with vector displacement show you how to get some really high quality vector or bumps or normal maps out of something like mudbox or zbrush and be able to bring it into your piece into Unity, but without all of the extra necessary polygons. Okay, so let's see what this thing is hiding. Okay. So we added some more detail, right? This is looking a little better. We we brought up the quality just a little bit more. So now we have we still have this this area still ugly. You know, there's, there's no way around it. It's still ugly. But as you can see all around, this looks pretty good. So I'm comfortable with this. We can go ahead and export this bad boy out. Export retope mesh. So the sort of can, I'm going to sort of can top underscore. Save that out. Voila. So. In the next video, I'm going to import this into Maya, and we're going to take a side-by-side -side look at the two pieces, make our small modifications to the can, so the can still looks like the way we want it to. Let's flip that, and bring it back into 3D code again, and get our UVs done. This is Edison Abelard, and I'm out.